After bringing you our first look at overhyped games that ended up being terrible, we went through your comments and suggestions. You gave us even more potentially great titles that came crashing into stores on a wave of hype and left us disappointed. Just like your favorite video game franchises, we were bound to return with a sequel. Slender – The Arrival Slender Man is one of the most celebrated horror game characters on the internet. The villain set the standard for horrifying online mythologies before those animal robot suits of Five Nights at Freddy's even thought about scaring your socks off. Oh. You'd think that with all the Slender Man buzz and the occasional real-life stabbing in his name, any game starring the message board monster would have to be worthwhile. Instead, Slender Man The Arrival tries to skate by on a creepy atmosphere and an occasionally spooky bad guy. The gameplay is simplified to collecting note pages and turning on generators while avoiding the creep stalking you. The game's main villain occasionally teleports around and can be seen staring at you in the distance until he appears nearby and jump scares you. And that's about it. At least the game helped inspire releases like Alien Isolation. But Slender the Arrival was way too overhyped to justify its underwhelming premise. Fable 3 Following in the footsteps of its predecessors, Fable 3's expansive world was filled with charm, but that doesn't necessarily save it from its obvious shortcomings. Most of the game's familiar RPG aspects were tossed out the window for the sake of making things easier for the casual gamer. Worse, the gameplay was plagued with more bugs than the streetwalkers in Bowerstone. Even with an all-star voice cast featuring Simon Pegg and Michael Fassbender, Fable 3's technical problems and simplified gameplay hamper any potential enjoyment. Even the game's final scenario makes you defend the entire country from invasion using money, and it's no easy sum to attain if you play the game properly. This ends things with an unsatisfying letdown for those who cleared the Fable trilogy, with no future installments in sight. The Order, 1886 in spite of its cinematic look, creative weapons, and unique story, The Order 1886's generic gameplay didn't end up being Sony's answer to Gears of War, despite early expectations. It's another case of visuals getting prioritized over gameplay. It doesn't help that the story is linear and offers no replay value, making it feel like a rental at best, or worse, an extended PlayStation demo. There are too many quick time events to make you ever feel like you're in control of anything meaningful. Despite werewolves, zeppelins, Tesla-powered weapons, weapons, and great graphics, there's not much else here. Once promised to be a huge system seller for the PlayStation 4, the order just ended up being short for order another game, because this one sucks. Sonic Boom – Rise of Lyric After the fiasco of 2006's Sonic the Hedgehog, we thought Sega would never be able to bring Sonic back to proper form. For 2014's Rise of Lyric, Sega completely redesigned the Sonic crew, giving them lankier limbs, useless athletic tape, random fashion accessories, and possibly steroids. Ultimately, Rise of Lyric boils down to what we were dreading the most, another lousy 3D Sonic game. Even with a successful TV series to help build up the revamped Sonic Squad, Rise of Lyric falls on its face. Many of the game's segments are hampered by an extremely basic combat system. There's also a weird laser called Energy beam that shoehorned into the game way too many times. In an era where Mario successfully made the jump to 3D multiple times, we're afraid this is going to be the final nail in the Sonic coffin. Sega should just sell the rights to Nintendo already. Tony Hawk Pro Skater 5 We had high hopes that returning to the Pro Skater series would mean we'd finally get a good skateboarding game again, but we were wrong. After developer Neversoft left the Tony Hawk franchise, Robomoto took over in 2010, producing games so bad that the whole franchise was put on hold. Somehow, Robomoto reclaimed the reins for Pro Skater 5, along with co-developer Disruptive Games, but adding another studio didn't make the game any better. Pro Skater 5 is filled with embarrassing glitches, outdated visuals, terrible controls, erratic obstacle clipping, and uninspired gameplay. The game's marketing was entirely based on the franchise name and the professional borders featured on the roster, but you'll have more fun just watching other gamers show off its endless bugs on YouTube. Pro Skater 5 is easily the worst game of the series and a blatant attempt to cash in on the memories of a once beloved series. Star Wars Battlefront even though it had all the ingredients of a great game, Star Wars Battlefront ultimately failed to deliver. 
Given developer DICE's history with the successful Battlefield series, fans expected multiplayer goodness on the same level as Battlefield 4. Throw in the Star Wars Battlefront franchise, and we were bound for something both nerdy and groundbreaking, right? Battlefront ended up being all sizzle and no steak. It's easily one of the greatest looking first person shooters ever made, but it's also one of the shallowest. Thousands of players voiced their unhappiness with the game, resulting in lukewarm scores on Metacritic and elsewhere. Excluding the tutorials, almost all of Battlefront focuses on online multiplayer. Despite a collection of familiar multiplayer modes, everything just boils down to the same kind of mid-range firefight, which can get old fast. After playing Battlefront for 30 minutes, you've pretty much experienced all the game has to offer. This game has a shorter life than one of Jabba's dancers. Assassin's Creed Unity Despite being a perfect opportunity for Ubisoft to push modern consoles to their limits, Assassin's Creed Unity ended up offering more of the same kind of stuff that we saw out of the franchise back in 2007. It doesn't have the awesome pirate motif of Black Flag, and the French Revolution backdrop gets pretty stagnant. While it's cool to see thousands of revolting citizens on the streets, it's underwhelming to watch the same thing happening down every city block. If that weren't bad enough, Unity is made much, much worse because of its numerous technical issues. Seriously, it has a ton of glitches. No, seriously, so many glitches. Some of these bugs are simple visual stutters, but there's much worse. A glitch where the faces of the characters don't show up, but their hair, eyes, and teeth do? It's as frightening as you'd imagine. Still, nothing beats having the game glitch just before your big assassination attempt on a high-profile target. Did Ubisoft delay the sequel because of these issues? Of course not. Assassin's Creed Syndicate launched less than a year later. Watch Dogs Watch Dogs was one of the most highly anticipated launch games for the PS4 and Xbox One, but it simply failed to deliver. Sure, gamers could hack their way through an open-world version of Chicago, but after playing for a few hours, nobody really wanted to. A lot of the fundamental elements of Watch Dogs simply aren't that good. Crappy controls, vehicles that handle like a tractor-trailer hovercraft no matter what you're driving. And that's a major problem, given how much driving you have to do. Also, it's filled with tons of repetitive side missions. So let's see. Poor controls, horrible driving, and crappy stealth sequences. Watch Dogs probably should have been sent to obedience school. Enter the Matrix. Remember how amazing that first Matrix movie was? Well, the video game that came afterwards, Enter the Matrix, is where hope goes to die. The title was a tie-in with the release of the first movie sequel, The Matrix Reloaded, which received similarly mixed reactions from fans and critics. As a result, Enter the Matrix was rushed to launch the same week that the film hit theaters, and it shows. Any game set in the world of The Matrix comes with some pretty simple expectations, among them being able to play as the movie's heroes, like Neo, Morpheus, or Trinity, while fighting with stylized moves and slow-down action sequences. You know, all the stuff that made people like the movie in the first place. Instead, you end up playing as Niobe or Ghost, two insignificant characters from Reloaded. The third-person fighting had a lot of promise, especially when you factor in your bullet time abilities, but it gets old quickly. Sure, it was kind of interesting that Enter the Matrix helped tell the side stories of what happened around the events of Reloaded. Too bad Reloaded wasn't much better than a crummy video game on its own. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to watch more videos like the one you just saw. And leave us a comment to let us know which hyped up games you think were the absolute worst.